What's up y'all, it's Shuffle, and today we're going to talk about some tips for new players since the last video helping new players did pretty well. So we're going to continue on with this for another video. And instead of pointing out mistakes that new players make, I'm going to give you five tips on how to just instantly get better at the game. There are obviously a lot of other little things you can do to improve on. That's why this game is kind of complicated. But there are some like just quick and easy things that you can do right now in your next mission and you will notice an improvement. And before we get started, obviously, hit the like, comment, subscribe, all that, you know, normal stuff. Make sure you check out Discord, Twitch, Patreon, all of that awesome stuff down below waiting there for thine eyes. All right, so the first tip that we're going to talk about, this is pretty common to most people after they played for a minute, is that you need to focus backline enemies first. The backline enemies are usually the supports on the enemy team and the stress casters, as they're called. So if you're dealing with afflictions quite often in your missions, you probably need to be taking these things down first. They go down much easier than frontline enemies, they have less HP, they have a little bit more dodge that so makes them harder to hit, which is kind of annoying. And they usually do not have protection, sometimes they do, but most of the time they don't. Because these enemies are both very threatening and somewhat squishy compared to the frontliners, this is why they're usually the go-to target for the first rounds of the battle. This is why you hear people complain about characters like Leper because they don't have reach, for instance, and being able to have reach into the backline is very important, so characters like Hellion and Highwayman and Plague Doctor, for instance, all look a lot better because they are able to lock down or kill backline enemies very effectively. Because of this specific reason as well, you should be putting moves that have reach on your heroes if they have them, or have some kind of plan to get rid of the backline enemies within about two turns. That's usually the preferred speed you should be taking these down and once you're able to get rid of backline enemies very quickly you will notice that the rate your heroes become afflicted because of stress probably starts to go down or if you're in the warrens for instance where disease can come at you from the spitting pigs these things will be mitigated and your gameplay experience will be a lot better for it the other part of this tip is to make sure you focus fire there are a lot of people that think okay i don't need my whatever, my Hellion doing all of this damage against this unit that has like 5 HP. You know, I'm going to have my Vestal try and zap it at the end of the turn. And that's usually not the proper way to be thinking about things because the enemy turns are so dangerous in this game that it's okay to do some overkill. So make sure you're focus firing, make sure you're taking down one thing at a time. And if you can, you usually want to get rid of like one or two units by turn two. This next tip kind of goes hand in hand with the first one, and that is that you should be stalling just a little bit. Stalling is a strategy where you use a couple stuns or maybe some low damage moves just to make sure that the enemies die slower or they're more controlled, and that way you can get some extra healing out. You don't have to do massive major stalling where you stall for like 12 turns to heal to full. In most cases, you don't need to do that. But there's really nothing wrong with if there's one enemy left, you stun it with Crusader, for instance, using Stunning Blow. It's up front, it's got 10 HP, you stun it, it's down to 5, it's just sitting there. And then, instead of killing it at the start of the next turn, since it's probably stunned, since Crusader's so slow, you use your other characters to heal up. You know, you use Vestal to heal, Jester to stress heal if you have him, or you use Crusader to do some healing because he's able to do that. And then you kill it at the start of the next turn with something that's faster once the stun wears off. This is very, very common in terms of strategy that it will become second nature at some point so you want to get rid of the big threat on turn one or two the next super big threat on turn two or three and then after that probably kill one of the frontliners if it's four units against you and then just whittle that last one down this is where stuff like bleed and blight get very strong not just for the fact they ignore protection but also that they slowly kill enemies so if you use those with stuns, you're still doing a lot of damage, you're not at risk of critting the enemy and killing it outright, and you're able to get one or two extra heals out per fight at the end. Now think of that to yourself where if you find yourself in these fights and you're getting out of them and everyone's at like 50 stress or they're under like 10 HP, think about if you had an extra one or two turns every single fight and you were using that for healing, how much better would your experience be? It's definitely worth doing. And you don't have to go overboard, but just make sure you're always looking for like an extra couple turns to heal. Just because healing in this game isn't that strong, and being able to get one or two more 
than you normally would over the course of like eight battles in a dungeon does start to add up. The third tip is make sure that you have a diverse set of moves, but specifically on your heroes, you want to equip some movement skills. You can get away with not doing it on some heroes in you know, certain cases, like Hellion doesn't always need breakthrough, for instance, but Crusader, as an example, is a unit that I always, 100% of the time, have Holy Lance on. And that's because even though if you think like, okay, I'm playing at Max Torch, that means that surprise isn't that common against me. The enemy can still surprise you at full light, which is frustrating to say the least, but they can do that. And all they need is one surprise where you have to spend the first like two turns clicking move and moving people back into position. And they've already done, you know, like 50 stress and 40 damage across your team, which means that skills that help you move around, even though you're not always going to be pressing them. And for many dungeons in that circumstance, you will just feel like you have three abilities and not four. It's okay. It's okay to have some contingency abilities where if things go wrong, sometimes it's okay to have a second, you know, personal heal like Lick Wounds, even though I don't think it's that strong of a move. Sometimes it's okay to have. Sometimes it's okay to have the random stress heal from Arbalest Flare ability, for instance. It's not just the clearing of Mark and Stun. You know, sometimes that extra three stress at max level is pretty nice. So make sure you always have some kind of way to move your team around without losing too much in terms of tempo or action economy which are terms i'm trying to introduce into your brains because those are very important in this game so instead of clicking move and moving one space with crusader why not holy lance and then just you know hit something for 14 damage that's pretty cool i'd rather do that than click move and do nothing else and on the topic of having movement skills you don't need the entire team to be able to move around with movement skills there are characters like Arbalest and Leper and Vestal that are very popular and they don't have movement skills. So it's okay, as long as one or two of your other units can move around to help other people reposition, that's pretty nice. So you definitely should be looking into that as well as just contingency skills in normal. Not in normal, in general. Why the hell did I say in normal? Number four, make sure you keep your gear and your skill upgrades maxed out for the appropriate difficulty you're doing. So if you're doing apprentice missions, which are level zero to two for your heroes, you can have gear and skills that go as high as level three. So it's always like one over you. The exception to this is level four, where for some reason you can't go to level five stuff because I guess having level five weapons, armor, and skills in veteran missions would be kind of game breaking, but it's a little odd that they do that to us, but that's besides the point. So make sure that your gear and skills are always, always max. I've had Viewer runs, which is where people send me their runs in Darkest Dungeon and I critique them if they want help and stuff, which is a very fun series to do. And there have been a couple specifically where, you know, a character gets hurt quickly or they're not doing a lot of damage and then, you know, you take one look at the hero and it's like, oh, they're level, they're in a champion dungeon, which is a max level dungeon, and they have a level four weapon, level three armor. It's like, okay, that's why they're dying, because they don't have, you know, they're basically like 10 you know, sometimes 10, 8, 12 HP behind and like 10 dodge and then some extra damage. Like those stats add up. They're incremental, but being down a couple of extra ranks in pretty much anything in this regard is very dangerous. That is the common way of people failing once they jump between difficulties. The jump to each difficulty in this game is pretty noticeable. So once you get used to the game and you've played it for a while, maybe you play like your second or third file, you'll start to put it into your brain where if I'm going to go from Apprentice to Veteran, I need to have my Blacksmith and my Guild Hall upgraded. That's why I talked about it so much in the previous video. And you need those upgraded, so when you get into Veteran missions, your heroes are as strong as they can be. So even if you get some bad RNG, you can tough it out in most cases. And then the jump to Champion, which is level 5 and 6 and all that, that is the biggest jump in the game. It is a different game once you get that high, just because the scaling on the enemy stats in terms of their damage, and their accuracy and their crit rate, it goes up very substantially. So being able to weather that storm is always a good thing to do. And if you want my personal experience, I was playing one time on Blood Moon and I went into Champion and I did not upgrade my Highwayman's armor from level four to five. And long story short, I got hit three straight times and I went straight down to zero HP because I got crit once and I was bleeding and I immediately died right after that because I did not have max level armor. So please learn from our collective mistakes as a community. 
And that's just talking about gear. The fact that you can upgrade skills to give yourself five extra accuracy for each rank, that is massive. Accuracy is the most important offensive stat in the game, and having lower rank skills means you have less accuracy, and it means you're missing, and you're not doing any damage or stunning or whatever else you're trying to do. So make sure you max those skills as well as your gear. The final tip is make sure you check the enemy moves, and I'm not talking about going to the wiki. When you're in battle and an enemy has used a move against you at least one time, it shows up in a little box on the bottom right corner, and then it has the symbols of what the move does if it does anything else. If it causes stress, it has a stress symbol. If it moves you, it has the little blue arrows. If it bleeds you, it says it bleeds you with a little blood drop. And this is very important. There are other games in terms of strategy where when you're dealing with the enemies, you have to learn what they're doing and you have to internalize it because the game will not tell you. One of the nicest things Darkest Dungeon does for you is it shows you what the enemy's move list is. So even if you forget what they can do, you know, because you put the game down for a couple weeks or something like that, or you fought one enemy one time and then you don't see it again for, you know, five hours or something, you go, what does this thing do? The game will tell you and give you a reminder, and that's very helpful. It doesn't show you every move they have right away, obviously. They have to use the move at least one time before it shows up in there, but having that happen where it shows you what they can do, and then if you keep checking it, you get in the habit of learning what they can do, even if you forget, it's always there for you. And that will really help when you're planning your teams and you're doing missions. You go, okay, if I go to the Warrens, for instance, there's a lot of status like bleed and blight from the enemies. So having resistance or battlefield medicine with Plague Doctor, which cures that stuff, is pretty nice. So as long as you're checking what the enemies can do, you will start to learn what they're capable of and how common they are and how to build appropriate teams to combat their tactics. All right, y'all, that's going to do it for this one. Thanks for watching. If you have any other tips that you need to share with our new blood and new friends, please drop it down below. Let me know what you're thinking. Let me know if there's something I missed. And obviously, check out the social media stuff like Discord, Patreon, Twitch. Join all of that. And I will see you all in the next one. Thanks for watching.